and then we're gonna come back up to stand. And so we're gonna start, because it's time to start, it's nine o'clock on the dot. We're gonna start with the therapy ball. So I do hope you have two balls that are of the same size, preferably the ones that I've spoken of a million times in here. <laughs> if you're not new, you've heard me talk about the Dollar Tree and the little toy bin that has all kinds of little balls that are squishy, but not so much so. So they do have some firmness there. So we're gonna start with those and we're gonna begin with your feet. This is gonna be like the best foot massage ever. How many of you like a good foot massage? So let's start with your right foot. So you got your balls down here on the floor. So I want you to take your big toe and park it right there on top of that ball. And then you're gonna bend the knee and kind of lean in like that. So that ball is literally kind of like, it's like it's pushing the big toe back as you lean in. You can even lift that heel up. Let me see if you can see there, kind of lift that heel up as you press into the ball. And it really stretch, oh, that feels so good. Imagine just that one big toe getting a good stretch and it feeling amazing. So we wanna really start with the foundation, your feet giving them a good little stretch and massage. So this is stretching as well when you're doing any sort of soft tissue work. So now kind of move the ball so where it's right in the middle toes and just a couple little pushes and pumps there, right? And then scooch it down to the baby toes, you know, maybe the last two or three. And same deal, lift that heel up, but let that ball kind of push all those toes back. So it's stretching right where the toes connect into the foot body. And then just go back through the middle and then over to the big toe. All right, so then put it underneath the ball of your foot, so that joint, and just start to smoosh down on it and then smoosh across so it comes now to the middle of the foot, just behind the toes, and then over to the outer edge, that kind of lateral border of the foot, and then back through the middle, and then over to the big ball of your foot. Then you're going to put it right underneath the arch of your foot there, and just do, I call it pen and spin. So you kind of shift the weight down into that foot as you kind of swivel around from left to right. It feels really good, I think. How about y'all? Okay, and then we're just gonna kind of do a little run, run, run across the arch of the foot and then maybe smoosh down on it so it kind of comes more towards that outer edge of the foot, the lateral border. And then back through the middle, pump, pump, pump. And then right to the inside arch of your foot. Now, if you're a little bit flat-footed or you notice that your arches are starting to fall and collapse some as you age, <laughs> and we're all aging, um, this can be helpful. Um, can kind of help stretch that out. All right, and then come just um, almost to the heel, a little bit in front of it that way, and just kind of step down on the ball. Again, you can do a little pin and spin if you want. And then go ahead and move it all the way up to the heel heel. Okay, so you're just jamming that heel down on it. This, by the way, is an excellent thing to do to prevent uh, plantar fasciitis or help just give you some relief if you're feeling that kind of pain that typically occurs right there on that heel. It feels like you're you know, walking on little bits of gravel <laughs> lodged underneath your heel. It's not a fun feeling if you've ever had it. All right, and then just kind of run, 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 run your foot all the way across from front to back. Okay, so they do tend to start to squish and lose their shape a little bit, but it'll spring back in a minute. So I'm just gonna give this other ball some abuse. <laughs> so starting with your left big toe, park that big toe right on top of the ball, and then just bend the knee and sort of lunge, lean into it. So it's pushing that big toe back, getting that wonderful stretch right where it connects into the foot body and then go to the middle toes same deal kind of pump in that knee front to back you can even let that heel lift up a little bit as you do it and then over to the baby toes let it push the pinky back we call it a pinky toe or a baby toe i got called out once by a, a guy in a class he said it's not a pinky toe <laughs> i guess he didn't like sounded too like i guess childish or something but it the baby toe all right, and then move back to the middle toes and then back to the big toe. 
And then let's go to the ball of the foot. So right underneath that big bone there and then just push down on it. So that ball is pushing up. It's just loosening up, it's stretching out, it's warming up, it's increasing circulation in the feet. This is all good. All of this is good as we start to go into our stretch yoga class today. And then go to the middle and then over to the outer edge. So it's right on that outer lateral border of the foot. And if you find a spot that's particularly tender, um, just kind of hang out there. Maybe just let that ball do its work pushing up and into that area. And as you know, if you're familiar with reflexology, there are places on our hands as well as the soles of our feet that pertain to different um, areas of the body, different organ systems, different uh, muscular systems. And so if you're having, I don't know, say an issue with headaches, sometimes we can find a trigger point. I don't even know if it's really called a trigger point, but just that meridian line that connects all the way down into um, the foot, and when you press on that area, it can often bring relief. All right, move to the arch of your foot, and let's do that little pin and spin. Okay, so you've just got your foot directly on top. That ball is just sort of grabbing some of that tissue, some of that fascia, and it is spinning it around and stretching it out and helping it detach and get loose if it is stuck. Um, in an unnatural way to um, other surfaces in there. I just want to loosen it all up. Oh yeah, right there on the arch. That feels wonderful. You just do this for five more minutes. All right, and then come just a little bit uh, further back with the ball, but slightly in front of that heel, and then just push down on the ball. Just try to smash that thing down flat if you can. And kind of move it over here to the outer edge and then more to the inside edge. Woohoo! Tenderness there on me. You'll find those spots, trust me. Just push down hard enough and do this long enough. You will find an area that needs to be addressed. All right, and then lastly, just right underneath your heel. So as you can probably tell, it's a little bit of a, like, a little bit of a balance challenge because you know, you've only got this one leg that's stable and secure, and then here, it's like you're all over the place. So not a bad thing to be slightly off balance and have to correct and make sure you don't fall over. Um, but when you're just doing that with that one foot on the ball, it kind of feels that way. And you just kind of smash, smash, smash. All right, and then run, run, run that whole foot all the way across the ball, back and forth. All right, so we'll use them later, but for now, just toss them aside. And then we're gonna come down onto all fours in tabletop position to start. Have your foam roller close by. We'll get to that in just a second, but just start with an inhale breath, arms up over your head. And then exhale breath, soft knees, flat back, slowly come on down, down, down to the floor. And then just let your head hang. You can keep those knees slightly bent. And let's just hang upside down here and then we're gonna go into that tabletop. But just simply breathe, simply swing and sway that torso back and forth from side to side. Already I'm feeling my back pop a little bit. It feels so good. All right, lift your head up, hands to the front, knees back here, and there we are in tabletop position. So drop the belly down towards the mat, lift the chin up, pull those shoulders away from your ears as you gaze forwards. And then on the exhale breath, you're gonna round your back, you're gonna straighten those arms real strong, spread the fingers wide, and feel that wonderful stretch from the base of your neck, literally all the way down to the tail. Release, belly drops, head comes up, inhale, breath. Exhale, breath, rounding your spine, straightening those arms, try to really push that upper spine upwards towards the ceiling. And then one more time, inhale, breath, belly drops, head up. And then long exhale, breath, pulling the navel to the spine, tucking the chin to the chest.
Good, and then just return to flat back. Walk your knees up towards the wrist, cross your ankles, push yourself all the way back to a sit. And then let's get your mat, your, um, sorry, that was loud. I'm sure you heard that. Bring your foam roller to the mat right behind you. So we're gonna start with the upper spine, upper back. And you wanna just come down to where you're not right on that lower back, but a little bit above it, okay? And then the feet are about hip width apart. Interlace the fingers, hands behind your head. Inhale, breath. On an exhale, breath. Just simply drop back until it feels like a great stretch. Now, if it's too much there, just simply roll yourself forwards. And we're just going to let that upper spine kind of drop back however far it goes. That's just where it goes. And let your elbows fall out to the sides. Try to drop your head back even more so you're looking perhaps to the wall behind you. Big inhale here. Exhale it out. Again, inhale breath. And then exhale breath. Draw the chin to the chest. From here, pull the abdominal muscles in and then lift your hips up. And let's just roll a little bit right there, back and forth, maybe about a foot going from here to there, rolling right across those upper back muscles. So you're getting your trapezius, your latissimus dorsi, lots of different muscles getting addressed here. Rhomboids right in the center there of that upper back. Good, and then if you can, roll up a little bit higher. You don't want to get right on the neck, but pretty darn close. And then just tuck the chin as you kind of push to come up here. And then drop the head back as you push the knees forwards. Push with the legs. Drop the chin, head up. Let's do a couple more here. And you will notice as you are foam rolling, you start in one place on the floor, on your mat, wherever. And just after a couple of rolls, it's like you're all over the place. Uh, it doesn't want to stay put. And that's just the nature of it. So I'm going to scoop myself up here. And now I'm going to try and do the entire line. So from just a little bit above that lower back area, all the way across up towards the neck. And then again, pushing with the feet to come here. So here's a little uh, side benefit. You're actually activating your core muscles here. When you do that slight spinal sort of flexion here with the upper body. Inhale, exhale. One more time, inhale, breath and then exhale up. Nice, all right. Take your roller, put it right here underneath your knees, and then hands are gonna hold you up. You're gonna roll back and forth across the hamstrings. So just from the backs of the knees all the way up to the tops of the hamstrings, right where they insert into those glutes, and then coming back here and then front to back. If it's too hard for you to hold yourself up, you just put one foot down like this, kind of scoot that roller over, let that one leg kind of hold you up. So that's one way to do it. You also get a lot more pressure on that one hamstring when you're just doing one leg at a time, however you want to do it. Then you can roll the legs outward, so do a little bit of external rotation. That's going to hit more of the outer portion of the hamstrings. and then kind of rotate inward so it's like you're pigeon-toed. And back and forth you go there. <sighs> All right, and then you're gonna sit right on top of it there. And let's roll back and forth across the gluteals. Okay, so once again, as you're coming here, your abdominals have to fire up and engage, otherwise you would just do a, a back flop on your mat and we don't wanna do that. So think about how your abdominal muscles work to help even make this foam rolling an effective um, form of movement for you. Okay, and then back and forth, side to side there. hi yi 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 And again, when you find that little hot spot, that tender spot, you just want to hang out and let the foam roller do its job pushing up into those areas. So I want to um, 
I'm going to try and find this, but I don't, if anybody knows where I could find this, let me know. But have you ever uh, gotten pears, maybe like from Harry and David, somebody might have sent um, a box of fruit as a gift. And typically that fruit will come in this little sort of stretchy, it looks like just like lattice work that's protecting that fruit, you know, and it can open and close, open and close. And it, you know, it literally looks like a lattice fence, but just the material, I'm not even sure what it is, if it's cloth or some sort of foam material, but it's an excellent representation of the fascial structure that encases um, literally everything in your body, all your organs, as well as your muscles. But I kind of wanted to get one of those little things <laughs> and do some demonstration just to kind of show you what's what's happening underneath the surface of the skin underneath the surface of the skin which I've posted some videos for you to see that um, I don't know if anybody saw the one with the mop the guy that had the mop that he had dunked in paint anyways I just I think if you can get a visual in your mind of what's happening when you're doing this it'll give you a much greater appreciation and not that y'all don't appreciate it um, I think it's just, it's good to see. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm vision envisioning that. So as I'm foam rolling, I'm just <laughs> envisioning all this stuck together fascial, um, matrix on top of those muscles. And that's what causes that restriction in movement, that immobility, that pain, that stiffness, that stiff feeling you get sometimes in the morning when you wake up, you just, oh, you just want to stretch. It's a natural inclination. All animals do it, right? You've seen your cat or your dog or somebody else's cat or dog <laughs> kind of stretch themselves up as they come out of a nap. Okay, let's do the front side. And then towards the end, we'll use the uh, therapy balls to do some stuff on the upper back as well as the glutes. So on to the shin bones. Here we go for the anterior tibialis smash. So just back and forth here, rolling across that sort of meaty muscle that's on the front side of your lower leg. So this muscle here is what's responsible for picking your toes up. So every time you take a step, you don't drag your foot and trip every step you go. <laughs> we want to have these strong, but we also want to give them a nice little massage because they do a lot of work more than you realize. I think the human body is made in such a way that when one area is injured or damaged and we sometimes think, well, that I don't need my elbow for anything. And then all of a sudden it's hurt and you realize, oh, I use my elbow for lots of stuff. You know, it's never until we're injured that we realize just how effective the body is working together as a whole unit. And it's funny, yesterday I was stretching a young girl. I think she's probably 12 and <laughs> she was like, what's the elbow good for? It's good for nothing. It doesn't do anything. And then I showed her something and um, and then she realized, oh, yeah, I can use it for this and use it for that. Um, but I know I've had so many different injuries over the years. And so it's kind of made me keenly aware of um, just what all these muscles do for us to keep us mobile and active. Okay, let's do the quadricep muscles. As you can see, my mat is just kind of has a mind of its own. It's just taken off. So you're going to come into elbow plank. You're going to draw yourself forwards, but stop just above the kneecap. You don't want to ever go right on top of any bones. So don't go right on that kneecap. Stop before it and then push back. So you come right to the tops of those thighs. And then again, we come forwards and then we push back. Inhale the breath here. And then exhale the breath, coming back. Again, inhale. And then exhale breath. Inhale, kind of rotate those legs inwards like that. And that's going to hit a little bit more hoo -hoo, on that outer quadricep. Ay, 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 ay. And then rotate outwards like that. Okay, so you're externally rotating from the hips. And now we're going to get a little bit more the inner portion of those quadriceps. Okay. 
good. Now for more stretch, bend the knees as much as you can. And then as you slowly roll back, just do a little bit of a windshield wiper action where you are rolling aye, 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 back and forth across those quadriceps and then come all the way back up this direction. You might feel it kind of rolling over bumps. Maybe it feels like you've got stiff cords kind of lodged underneath the skin. So we are breaking some of that up. Ah, it feels so good. Okay, and then we are going to do the inner thigh. So set your foam roller directly long ways like this. You're gonna come into elbow plank. You're gonna let this knee, this left knee is gonna come on top of the roller and then the foot down at the other end. So if you got a short roller, it might not fit perfectly like that, just do what you can. And then you let the hips drop and try to especially drop that left hip down. Looking forwards, you're just gonna shift all the way out to the side, bringing that roller up to the inner thigh attachment point right up here in the groin. And then again, rolling out to the left and then bring it back in. Out to the left you go, and then back in, and then push it out, and then bring it in. One more time, out, and then bring it in. Now come right to the middle of that inner thigh muscle, and you're gonna try to lift that foot up like that, and then drop it down. Lift that foot up, and then drop it down. Do two more of those. I know that's pretty intense, but maybe it's a much needed area to address. Okay, let's do the other side and I'm just gonna flip around because I don't have any room. I got a wall back here. And then we're gonna go right knee up on top, foot down there at the bottom, roll all the way out to the side, up to the groin, and then roll it back into the mat. Again, rolling it out to the side and then rolling it in. Roll out to the side and then roll it in and do one more of those. Inhale breath. And then exhale breath. Whew. All right, then just roll it so that that roller is right in the middle of that inner thigh. Lift the foot up, lower it down. Lift that foot up and lower it down. Do it two more times. Inhale. And then exhale. One more time. Inhale. And then exhale breath. Yeah. All right, T. So you can just move that aside for now. Again, we'll come back to it later as well. But let's come into child's pose. So feet are touching back there, knees are wide, hands to the front, look forwards, inhale breath. And then on the exhale breath, push those sit bones back, drop the head and shoulders down, and let your forehead rest on the mat and just breathe. Nice long inhale breath here. And then exhale breath out. Again, inhale breath. And then exhale it out. So you're gonna flatten those palms into the mat, spread the fingers wide, lift your head up, inhale, lift. Exhale, shift the shoulders from side to side, but try to keep your arms super straight. So as your shoulders glide to the right, swing your hips over here to the left. And then as the shoulders glide to the left, swing your hips over to the right. And then again, shoulders right, hips go left, and then shoulders go left, and the hips swing over to the right. Good, now inhale breath, press down with the hands to lift up. Exhale, take your left hand on top of the right, sink into the left shoulder, look underneath your right arm, stay there for a breath, inhale. Exhale it out. Come on up, inhale. Left hand here, right hand on top, and then exhale. Drop your head between the arms, drop the right shoulder down, and just take a little peek underneath your left arm here. Inhale, breath. And then exhale it out. Okay, now coming back up, inhale, breath. And then exhale, drop your elbows, flip the palms up. As you push the hips back, bend the elbows, reach the fingertips down the base of the neck, and kind of dig your elbows downwards into the mat to stretch your lats and your triceps. Just breathe. Nice long inhale here. Exhale it out. And then we're 
release the hands, flip the palms over. From here, you're gonna shift the shoulders forwards and then just bring your knees together. Tuck the toes under and back. So just keep your arms right there on your forearms on the mat. Take an inhale breath. On the exhale breath, I want you to round your spine upwards. So scoop that belly up and into the spine. Your head is down so you're looking at your quads. Drop the belly and look forwards, inhale breath. Do it again, exhale round, scoop that belly upwards, chin to the chest. And then one more time, inhale breath, belly drops head up. And then exhale breath, push down through those forearms, tuck that chin, squeeze your abdominal muscles up. Now from here, stay in that scoop position, lift the knees up and straighten your legs all the way out. And then melt the heels down to the back of the mat, kind of walking it out. So you shift the weight from one foot, yeah, and then shift it over to the other. Feel that wonderful Achilles tendon, calf muscle stretch, even the arches of your feet getting a good stretch. So um, I know when we were smushing down on those balls with our feet, I was referring to plantar fasciitis, an inflammatory condition that sometimes happens on the bottom side of your foot. So doing the ball is a great way to help with that, but also that plantar fasciitis could very well be tied into super overly tight calf muscles. Most often it is, so stretching these guys out can bring a lot of relief for that plantar fasciitis as well. So never forget that just because you feel pain in one area doesn't always mean that the issue and the root of the problem is there. It could be upstream a ways or downstream. So there's just this domino sort of effect in the body when one area is out of whack, <laughs> for lack of a better term, when it's out of whack, then all the surrounding neighbors in terms of muscles start to go into a defective mode of ambulating around so that you can do so comfortably. But then that causes other problems and you really just have to, you know, address the issue at its root. And that's always the challenge, is figuring out where is the root of this problem. Okay, straight legs, hips up, inhale, exhale. Push those hips up a little higher, inhale, and exhale. Very good, all right, so drop your knees down to the mat, straighten your arms out, walk the hands in a little bit, inhale. Belly drops, head comes up. Exhale, breath rounding your back, chin to the chest, squeeze your abs. Again, inhale, breath, belly drops, head comes up. Exhale, breath rounding your spine, chin to the chest. All righty, so come to flat back, neutral position, right leg, left arm reaching out, inhale, bird dog. Exhale, breath, just bring the hand and the knee down and we're gonna switch. So go left leg, right arm out, inhale, lengthening. And then exhale, breath, hand and knee come down. Inhale, breath, right leg, left arm reaching. Exhale, bring it down. One more time, left leg and the right arm goes out, inhale. And then exhale, breath, hand and knee come down. You're gonna walk those hands a little bit further ahead, tuck the toes under, shift the shoulders forward. So now you're in a plank type position with bent knees, or if you want, you can straighten your legs out. So let's get a good body alignment position here in your plank. The shoulders are stacked right over your wrists. Heels are pushing back and your gaze is about two feet in front of your mat. Inhale, breath here. On an exhale breath, send the sit bones up, head down, melt your heels to the back of the mat. And then walk it out, shift the weight back and forth from right to left. Okay, and then straight legs, feet are together, super strong straight arms, inhale, exhale. Shift into plank again. So top of a push-up, inhale breath. 
Exhale, push forwards and inch or two, drop your knees, lower down just about midway. So my elbows are kind of squeezing into the side rib cage. Then from there, the hips drop and the chest lifts up. So you can keep your knees down if you want or straighten the legs if you feel ready for that. Looking up, inhale. Exhale, send the sit bones up, downward facing dog. So let's just flow through that a couple of times. You're gonna inhale, shift to plank. Exhale, breath, lower midway down, hover. Inhale, breath, chest and head up. Exhale, breath, sit bones up and back. Downward facing dog. Again, inhale, plank position. Exhale, lower midway down. Inhale, breath up, dog. Exhale, breath down, dog. Here we go again, last time, inhale into plank. Exhale, breath, lower midway. Inhale, breath, upward facing dog. And then exhale, breath, downward facing dog. Big stretch here, stay for another breath, inhale. Exhale it out. <coughs> Good, now lift your head up. You're gonna pick up the right foot and step right in between the hands here, and then drop your back knee down, uncurl the toes, head up. Stretch those arms straight out and up, inhale. And then exhale, breath, float the hands down and then push your hips back. Straighten the leg, flex the foot, and then just especially reach this left arm out in front. You can slide that right hand back a bit and breathe. Good, now slowly come back up, drop the toes down, hips come forwards. Once again, arms out and up, inhale. Exhale, breath, floating the hands down, push those hips back, straighten the leg, flex the foot, slide the left hand forwards, draw the right hand back. Wonderful hamstring stretch here. Good, now as you come up, bend that front knee, hands on either side of the foot, head up, toes under, straighten your back leg, inhale. And exhale, breath, step on back into downward facing dog. One long breath here, inhale. Exhale it out. Lift your head up, take that left foot. I want you to step right up here in between the hands, drop that back knee down, and then bringing your chest up. So one thing I want you to not do, and I hate always cueing, not that I always cue, but I hate to cue in the negative. I, I always try to keep it positive, like do this. Uh, but it's easy to just kind of like sink and kind of hang out. You know what I mean? Like hang out on your joints without even activating the muscles around there. You don't want to do that. So when we're doing this uh, position here, there's a little bit of a downwards push with your foot. Maybe not that much, but enough to activate those muscles around that hip to protect it and protect that lower back as well. So stretch your arms up, inhale breath. Give that little downwards push with that left foot as you look up. And then on the exhale breath, float the hands down, push those hips back, straighten the leg, flex the foot. Slide now that right hand forward, slide the left hand back, and then lower your chest down. So what you can do here is think about digging this heel downwards into that mat, like you're trying to make a little heel print right there. And that will help turn on those muscles around the hip socket. And then coming back up, shift the weight forwards again. So you bend that front knee, a little downwards push with that foot, and then reach up over the head, inhale. And then exhale, breath, floating the hands down. Push those hips back, slide the right hand forwards, left hand back, flex your foot, dig that heel down, head comes towards your knee. Good, and then coming back up with the chest, one hand on either side of your left foot, toes under, straighten your leg, inhale. Exhale, breath, step back into down dog. One long breath here, inhale. Exhale it out. And you know at any time that you want, you can just drop those knees, you can come into child's pose, you could just hang out there for a couple of breaths or a couple of cycles of what we're doing here and just join back in whenever you're ready. So don't feel like, you have to do every single thing that we are doing here. You can always take a break in that child's pose. You're in your own home. 
You're the master of your own body. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> All right, lift your head up. Let's go again with this same stretch sequence. So right foot comes forward. So you're going to drop the back knee down and uncurl the toes. So think not only about this foot kind of pushing down and in, but think about that back knee kind of digging kind of down into the floor, like you're trying to make a knee print in the mat right back there. Okay, so that's gonna help activate the muscles on the front side. So stretch those arms out and up, inhale breath. And then exhale breath, floating the hands down. Push your hips back, slide the left hand front, right hand back, flex your foot, drop your head down and push that right heel into the floor. Make a heel print with your right heel. Coming back up, let's do it again. So bending the front knee, not just hanging out all loose in your joints, but trying to tighten and activate the muscles around there, pushing this thigh downwards, pushing that foot downwards. Inhale, breath up you go. And then exhale, breath, floating the hands down to the mat. Push your hips back, straighten your leg, flex your foot, slide the left hand forward, right hand comes back and breathe. Good, now come up and then bend that front knee, one hand on either side, toes under, straighten that back leg, inhale. And then exhale, breath, step back into down dog. One long breath here, inhale. And then exhale it out. Lifting your head up, gaze to the top of the mat, let's pick up the left foot, set that foot right there, right in between the hands. And then you're gonna drop your back knee down and uncurl your toes. So remember, a little bit of a downwards push with this foot, kind of a downwards push with this quad and knee into the mat. Don't overarch that back. You want to try to lift up out of this pelvic bowl with your torso. So inhale, lift up and look up. And then exhale, breath, floating your hands down, push your hips back, slide the right hand forwards, left hand back, flex your foot, head to knee. And just breathe. All right, once again, when you bend the front knee, the head and chest comes up, arms sweep up, pushing down with the left, push that right knee downwards into the mat. And then exhale breath, floating the hands down, push those hips back, slide the right hand forwards, left hand back, foot flexes and the head drops down and breathe. Good, and then come back up. One hand on either side, tuck your toes under, straighten that back leg, inhale, breath. Exhale, breath, step on back into down dog. One nice long breath here, inhale. And then exhale it out. Take your right leg up for three leg dog. Inhale, breath, nice split here. Exhale, breath, bend the knee, scoop your belly. Let's swing that foot through here and place it right in between your hands. Now you're gonna come all the way up. Inhale, stretch the arms up over your head. So same principle applies. This foot's kind of pushing down, but not so much that you straighten it up, but just firm pressure. And then this toe is pushing down, almost like you're trying to slide it in like that. So inhale, breath, looking up. And then exhale breath, floating the hands down to the mat. Take that right arm around the back and circle it and look up at your hand here, inhale. And then exhale, float your hand down to the mat, step back into down dog. One nice long breath here, inhale. Exhale it out. Now we take the left leg up for three leg dog here. So nice split, inhale breath. And then bend the knee, exhale breath, hips stay high as you swing your foot through and step right there in between your hands. And then from here we come up into crescent lunge. So arms are up over your head, pushing down a little bit with that foot, pushing that back toe down into the mat. Inhale breath. And then exhale breath. Reach those hands down, circle this left arm all the way around and up. Inhale as you look up at your hand. 
exhale breath, floating your hand down to the mat, step on back into down dog. Inhale breath here once. Exhale it out. So one more time on each side for this. Right leg up again for three leg dog, inhale. And then exhale breath, bend the knee, swing your foot through, step right between the hands for lunge, and then come on up into crescent lunge. Inhale breath, pushing back toes down, pushing right foot down, eyes are looking up. And then exhale breath, reaching forwards, plant the left palm, circle that right arm around and up. Now, I know I'm guilty of this terribly, so I'm gonna start cueing it better. But this back leg and foot, sometimes I'll just kind of get lazy and do that. And that's actually another stretch altogether. But when we do this, do your best to try to keep your kneecap facing the floor. Try to keep that back heel up, up, up. So this uh, right arm is going to circle all the way around and look up at your hand. Inhale, breath. And then exhale, breath. Float the hand down. Step back. Downward facing dog. One long breath here. Inhale. Exhale it out. Left leg goes up for three leg dog. Here we go. Inhale, breath. Nice split in the legs. Bend the knee. Exhale, breath. Swing that foot through. Step right between the hands here. And then you're going to come up. Crescent lunge on this side. Inhale, breath. Push that back toe down. Push the left foot down. And then exhale, breath. Leaning forwards. Plant that right hand, circle this arm around. Now watch that that back foot doesn't just flop like that. And I'm guilty, I admit. Bring that heel back up to the ceiling. Inhale, look up. And exhale, breath. Hand comes down to the mat. Step back, downward dog. Inhale, breath here. And then exhale, breath out. Lift your head up. You're going to bring your knees right up here behind your wrists. You're going to cross your ankles. You're going to push back to a sit, and then you're going to stretch those legs out in front, and then just shake, shake, shake. Back and forth there. Okay, so sitting up nice and tall. Inhale, extend the arms straight up over your head. And then on the next exhale breath, you're going to hinge at the hips. You're going to reach forwards, reach, reach, reach as far out that way as you can. And then lower down, drop your head and stretch your lower back as well as those hamstrings. Good, and then roll it up. Separate the feet a little bit like that. So just maybe to the very outer edges of your mat. Inhale, reach the arms straight up overhead. On the exhale breath, hip hinge, reaching those arms out that way, that way, that way, that way. Reach, 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 reach. And then you're gonna round down over the legs, drop your head to the floor. Good, and then roll it up. So we're gonna do it one more time, but if you want more stretch, let me show you a little trick that you can do with your foam roller. So grab it. You're gonna put your foam roller here at the end. And now you are going to rest the Achilles tendons, actually just a little bit above that point, kind of right there um, on that more meaty part of your calf. So now, straight legs, stretch those arms up, inhale breath. And then exhale breath, hip hinge, reaching out, 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 reaching forwards and then come all the way down. You can just grab around that roller and drop your head and chest down. You now slowly roll it up. All right, so just push the roller so it's just right there at the edge of your mat. The knees are gonna be bent and then you're gonna slowly come all the way down onto your back and then just bring your knees with you. Hug your shins, a little rocking motion from side to side there. Good, and then just set that left foot down to the floor 
you're going to cross the right thigh all the way over the left. So you can just let your foot rest there like that or pick up that other foot and then just do a little wrap, like eagle wrap position with the legs, right? Now open up the arms to look like a cactus. Inhale, breath. Exhale, breath. Let both legs together. One whole unit fall over there to the left and then turn your head to look right. Try to keep that right shoulder close to the floor. I know it's going to come up some, and that's totally normal. If you are able to get that right shoulder down and the legs touching there, then just pat yourself on the back. That means you're like super awesome in your flexibility in your torso. I'm not there yet, but you know, we're all, it's a journey. We are all uh, not perfection, but progress. Okay, now slowly bring your legs back up. You're gonna uncross and then you're gonna recross. So take the left leg and go over. And then if you can, kind of wrap the feet around like that so that left ankle comes behind the right Achilles tendon. Arms stay here in that football goal post or cactus shape. Inhale, breath. And then on the exhale breath, let the knees together fall over here to the right. So see my left shoulder's coming up. So you might be here and that's totally fine. You're just letting gravity do its work to kind of pull this left side of the upper torso down to the mat and look over your shoulder and breathe. Inhale breath. And then exhale breath out. Good, now turn your head back to center, bring the knees back up, and then you're gonna uncross, and then recross once again. So right leg goes over left, wrap that foot around, take an inhale breath, and then exhale breath. Let the knees together fall all the way over here to the left, and now take this left hand, if you can, and just kind of park it on top of that quad. Turn and look over your right shoulder here. Breathe, inhale breath. And then exhale it out. Anybody's back popping? I'm getting a lots of little natural adjustments going on in my back. Feels great. Good. Turn your head back to neutral. Slowly bring your legs back up. And then as you uncross, you're going to recross the other way. So pick up the left, cross it over the right, and then hook ankle around ankle. Arms are still here. Inhale. And then on the exhale, let the legs together fall all the way over here to the right. Take that right hand on the outside of a thigh, <laughs> a thigh, probably your left thigh, and then turn and look over that left shoulder. Try to just ease this left shoulder back down towards the mat. Inhale, breath. And then exhale, don't try to force anything, especially in this pose, don't try to force. I mean, really any pose, you never wanna force yourself into a stretch. Just let your body kind of guide you. It will naturally go a little deeper as you continue to breathe deep. Inhale. And then exhale it out. You're gonna turn your head back to center and then bring those knees up and then uncross and then let's stretch the legs out straight. Reach the arms over your head here, inhale. And then exhale it out. Go limp, whole body relaxed. All right, so if that roller is close to your feet down there, I want you to roll it into you, just like that. Set your feet on the other side of it. Then you're gonna lift your hips up into bridge and then roll it in even closer so that you can just rest your buttocks right there on top of the roller. <clears throat> now, holding either end here, so I've got the long one. Of course, if you got the short one, you're just holding there, no big deal. I want you to bring those knees up into the chest one at a time. So this should feel good on your lower back because you've got a little elevation already there in 
the sacrum and then just let the legs go away slightly inhale and then exhale let the knees come in one more time inhale push those legs away not too much and then exhale breath let those knees come into the chest and then start to rock a little bit from side to side with your legs so what you want to feel here when you're doing this just so you know if that roller's in the right place is this wonderful massage laterally across those upper buttock muscles right where they attach into the lower back so you don't want to be on bone if you're on bone scoot yourself in such a way that it's rolling right across the fleshy meaty part of your gluteus muscles and if you can go a little bit more over to the side each time you go you're going to really feel that glute medius get a little massage a little pressure right there should feel great and then let's go one more time over to the right and then one more time over to the left and then just hang out here see if you could stretch out both legs so it doesn't have to be completely straight you could just bend that bottom knee and let that top leg go straight and maybe even touch your toe to the floor over here try to keep your shoulder down on the mat and now bend the top knee bring the left knee up to meet it and then let's just go a little bit back and forth like this again across that roller with those glutes getting a nice little massage laterally nice good and now let's roll it all the way over to the right i'm going to just reposition myself or else i'm going to crash into the wall so the knees are going to go all the way over here to the right and then if you want more, stretch out the top leg straight. Maybe you let that toe come down. Maybe let this foot just sort of rest there on the floor. And then try to bring this left shoulder back down. Look over your shoulder here to the left. Inhale, breath. Good. Now bend the top knee and bring the underneath knee to meet it and then just back and forth a couple more times from left to right here, rolling right across that glute medius muscle. Ay, 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 ay. Should feel good. All right, then set the feet down one at a time. Lift your hips up. And then just push that roller out of the way. And then just kind of square your body back up. And let's hug the knees into the chest. Make a tight little ball, rocking left to right there. All right, kick the legs to rock back. Bend the knees to come up a little. Kick to go back. Bend to roll up. One more time, and you're gonna come all the way up to a sit position here. And then you're gonna find your therapy balls. We're gonna do one more thing here for your upper back. So grab the two balls. And what you will do when you're down on your back is you're gonna try and uh, just take the balls and set them right there on either side of the spine, not right on it. Kind of push, 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 down, down, down. And you'll know when you're in the right spot. So you're gonna to have to Stay a little bit lifted here in this spinal flexion to do it. So just push those balls down, then hands behind your head, then start to shift the head back this way. Let the elbows fall out. So let's not do anything other than just simply breathe right here. We're not moving. You're just letting those balls push right up into the center of the back. Now, if you need to kind of push to get the balls in a better position for you. Again, you don't want to feel like you're right on the spinal column. That is not what we want. We want to be on the fleshy, meaty part of the muscles. So take an inhale breath. And then exhale breath. Now 
Next inhale breath. Let your head rest all the way down on the floor. Stretch the arms up and then just kind of, you can clasp the hands or do a little, you know, little Charlie's Angels gun thing. <laughs> and then just draw circles with your fingertips up on the ceiling. So as you're doing that, you're going to feel those balls kind of press up in around into the rhomboids, the traps. Now go the other direction. Just circle those arms around, drawing circles on the ceiling. Good. Now just drop the right arm back, left hand down. Switch, drop the left arm back, right hand down. So as you're doing these movements with the arms, you should feel those balls just slightly pressing up into those muscles. You might find a hot spot along the way. And then once again this way, and once again this way. Good, now keep your left hand down. I want you to just kind of draw circles with your elbow. So imagine your elbow pointing up to the ceiling. See, our elbows do have a purpose. <laughs> And you're going to circle it around and around. Don't let that ball scooch away, though. It should be underneath that right upper back. Go the other direction. Circle that elbow around on the ceiling here. Good. Now just rest that right hand down. And then lift that left arm up. Bend the elbow. So let that elbow draw big circles one way. Just around and around you go. So really, you're just trying to let that ball get into those upper back muscles. Oops, now go the other direction. Circle your elbow around the opposite way. Just try to relax those muscles on the back side. Sometimes when there's a little bit of tenderness, we tend to eh, tense up away from it. And that's not good. That sort of defeats the purpose. We're wanting to relax those muscles. This feels really good. All right, and then just rest that left hand down. You're gonna tuck the chin to the chest and lift up, and then reach back if you can find them. Yeah, they might have scooched down a little too far. Bring your shoulders and head down. Feet hip width apart, lift the hips up. Set one ball underneath each glute muscle, and then just let your hips sink down into the balls. So you should feel like they're pushing right up in the center of those glutes there. So you're going to waggle your hips a little bit from left to right. So that's just allowing those balls to laterally sort of hit those muscle fibers there. And then every now and then you got to scooch them in closer because they start to work their way towards the outer edges of your glutes. And that's okay. You can just simply lift up and push them in and go back to your side to side waggle with your hips here. All right, and then just get it right back in the center and then just stretch the arms over your head. So what I want you to do is just stretch the right leg down all the way straight. Let your left knee fall out to the side, but try not to let the whole body roll over with you. Try to maintain pressure with that right glute into the ball and then bring the knee back up. Inhale, exhale, let it go out. Inhale, knee up. Exhale, let the knee go out. Inhale, knee up. And then exhale, bring the right knee in and stretch the left leg down straight. Inhale. Exhale, let the right knee fall out to the side there so your inner thigh is facing the ceiling. Again, your whole body's not going with it. It's not following it. You still have this left hip kind of anchored down into that ball. Inhale, knee up. Exhale, knee falls out. <sighs> Inhale, knee up. And exhale, knee falls out to the side. Let that ball press up in there. And then bring the knee up. And then just set both feet flat on the floor. Lift your hips up. Grab a hold of those balls. Let your hips come down and then just push those balls over your head there. Hug your knees into the chest. Make a little small, tight ball as you rock from side to side there. And now grab underneath, tuck your chin, rock and roll from front to back. And then all the way up you go. Very good. And then just facing front here, you can cross your ankles, sit cross-legged. Arms by your sides, inhale breath, floating those arms up over your head, 
in the backs of the hands together right there. And then on the exhale breath, as you reach forwards, kind of hollow out through the chest, drop that chin, unfurl those hands and arms, and then up we go. Inhale, breath here. Exhale, breath reaching forwards. Unfurl. And now we just open out to the sides here. Inhale, breath. And then exhale, hands to heart center, and then drop your head and chest down. And have a very blessed day. Thank you for coming and thank you for doing. And I hope your body feels great. We need to treat our bodies to this on a regular basis. Don't look at this as a fluff wasted hour because you didn't burn five gazillion calories. It's not all about burning a gazillion calories. If it's about weight loss, we need to also manage stress and help our body repair and heal so that we can be more efficient at metabolizing fat, if, if in fact that is your goal. So I know sometimes that's, um, it's like, oh, let me skip this day because it's not enough, you know, my Fitbit didn't tell me I did much, but you did do a lot. There's things that Fitbit cannot measure that go on right here in this class. If we could measure all of the endorphins that are released, the serotonin that's released, the toxins that are being flushed out, how good you feel and how quickly um, you can get rid of some of that soreness in the body, um, that would be a great thing if it could measure that. But it, it doesn't. It's pretty much all based on heart rate.